Part of the good practices of any compositor should be that they come up with systems within their scripts because if things change, everything within the script will be automatically readjusted. So that's the way that we should always work. So what we're going to do in this example is exactly that. So I have this aerial view of a forest and I've tracked this plate with a simple camera track and I end up with this camera. Then I've used a depth generator so I can generate depth. This is a native NoobNook, not very commonly used but uh, it's here. So you just click analyze sequence and that should give you the depth. So if we look at the depth, this is what we have as uh, the output. But the way that this is working is we have the stronger values at the front and the not so strong values at the back. So we have to invert this because that's the way that we're gonna do the following case study. We're gonna say one over Z on the depth channel and that will change the aspect of that same depth channel and this is exactly what I have in here but we need to remap that depth channel because this depth channel as all depth channels is the depth of the world in which the seat is sitting but what we want in this case we want to remap those values so we end up with more or less this line there is no much change in terms of black levels from this point more or less onwards we're gonna have some change in black levels some hazing and that's we we are trying to to come up with. It's a system that will automatically take care of the black levels depending on where the subject is in the scene. So to do that we drop a grade node and now we're gonna say our black point it's at the front somewhere in here and then we're gonna say the white point should be the furthest away so we're gonna say somewhere in here. So let's look at what we have. So again we're saying we don't have much change up until here and then from here till the end that's where we see some change progressively more and more of course so that's what we have so the values don't go above one even though for this purpose what we're seeing here is just for reference so it doesn't really matter because we're not going to use this within the actual main pipe okay. so now we can further adjust now we have this dragon here that we will want to integrate in the scene as much as we can black levels first and then we'll see what we can do extra but black levels will be something desirable to have if we put an element on a card as we're gonna have to do it here because this is a flat image of course we don't have any AOV so we don't have depth so we're gonna put this on the card and we're gonna put the card wherever we want taking this point cloud as reference as visual reference so let's put this at the very front of our scene so in the beginning of the forest somewhere in here and then I'm using the same camera let's see what we have so this is what we have let's say that the dragon is more or less where these trees are so we have to take care first what's the base level of our black levels what's the blackest that this dragon should be so I just change the black levels here this is the base level from this point further away the black levels should follow whatever values we have in the scene how do we do this automatically it's basically extract the depth channel and of course the scan line render gives us that for free so we we're gonna basically steal all the manipulation that we did in here because we manipulated this depth saying that okay it's more or less from this point until the end that we start to see some change so we're gonna do that and we're gonna steal what we did in here for the scene and apply that on the dragon okay so now our depth channel will have the same type of manipulation so now what we're gonna do is we need to color that dragon in such a way that the further he goes the highest the black levels will be and not only the highest but with a certain value automatically as well so if we have it like this this will be exactly the same but then this will take over okay so we're gonna say what's the furthest black level we want and we want say if the dragon sit in here we want that to be our black level the maximum black level say for example this guy here if we have this as a normal grade not being masked by any channel we would have this now of course this is only valid if the dragon is like further down around this region otherwise this doesn't make any sense so instead we're gonna put the mask to depth because I've put the, the depth from here so we have our depth in here and now if I put the new viewer here we'll be able to see within the point cloud where we are okay we are right at the front so we don't have any change in terms of black levels but the further away you go the black levels will start to change automatically 
Okay, so this will go to, if you go to the end of the scene, you'll see this, this changing even more. Of course, you should change, for example, this is probably a little bit too dark still. So you would have to remap this guy here so it will be affected more already around this region here but an important thing is not only the black levels but also the color of the atmospherics that we want in Aerith from the background and maybe this is okay the black levels I think it's still a bit too dark but one thing that we're definitely missing is the tone of the background so in order to do that what we can do we're gonna try to come up with an average color of the background and we can do this easily by having this blur to 100 or something like that you adjust this to taste and then we want these colors to be injected the key mix it's an option there's other options we want to inject this within the depth channel so in this case i'm shuffling the depth channel out uh, in here i'm using it inside no special reason but uh, it's just for it to be a bit uh, more clear in terms of how to do things in different ways of course so we have the key mix here and now we're gonna if we look at the pre mod you see this is taking this color and we're gonna put that on the dragon then we'll just the taste if we put this fully we don't see the dragon because the dragon is being confused by the actual background see barely see it so you put the touch of this something like that and this will also change the black levels a bit okay so uh, this means that we have our dragon here and if you go down it will become a bit greener if we go up it will become a bit more the color of the sky and also the black levels will be readjusted depending where you are in the scene you can compile this into a tool as i did this in here a long time ago so this will take the background in here you can apply either a constant or an average color of the background and then you assign your depth channel to readjust or remap where the depth is and uh, this will give you this for free so this is a good way to do this type of work if we need to normalize the depth channel for some reason we have two methods basically which is we go to the depth channel we know that uh, it's going way above one and so normalization means we're gonna keep the same relationship but we're gonna take the whole thing down up until one and not below zero it's not the same thing as just clamping it of course clamping it will put this to one on the channels that we are clamping now we have one but this is not a true normalization this is just clipping the values to one where they go above one so the basic formula for any normalization is this so it's the set of values we can have a set of values a certain value minus the minimum of that set and that whole thing goes over the maximum value minus the minimum value so what we have to do is to drop a expression after this guy and try to come up with the minimum and maximum the way to do it is with a curve tool and we're going to say instead of uh, averaging the values of uh, every couple of frames we're going to say this to every frame okay so every frame we're going to analyze it the true value and then we're going to say max luma pixel i'm just going to do this for two frames and then here we're going to have the maximum value we can go to the curve here max luma fix value and we know that this is the maximum okay of the frame range that i selected and analyzed it so this is the value and now what we can do is we can drop an expression and we're going to apply this formula so we're going to apply this on the depth and we say the x in this case is going to be the depth it's the collection of values the set of values that we have and then we're going to minus this minus the minimum and the minimum will be zero on our set of values here that we analyze and then we're going to put this over the maximum which is this value here and we need to minus that by zero so this is now normalized we are keeping the relationship of the pixels but we're taking the whole thing down as much as we can of course so we can have a maximum of one and a minimum of zero all right so this is now the normalized depth so this is the true normalization and then of course if we want to remap again for some reason we can do the same trick as before go here set the say the one that is the closest to camera to that black point with that value and somewhere around here i would say that this is the brightest point which is one it's going to be our white point okay so now this is the difference 
all right this is how you do a normalization of any set of values let's take a look at a different example now which is we have this element which is a smoke element and we have our dragon and we want to put one over the other we want to put our smoke on top of our dragon but we want the dragon to be more or less apparent depending on how deep is in the scene and we're going to do that automatically so first thing to do is obviously create an alpha channel from this image that we don't have because it's just a plain image so we're going to drop an expression and normally what i do is i sum all the channels rgb and then i put a clamp another way to do this would be to use a keyer based on the luminance and then you'll get your channel as well there you go now we have it and now if you put one over the other of course if we want the depth channel we have to do something with this guy because this will not give us anything that uh, we we want so the way to do it is you put a card straight and then you open the camera and this time this camera is not going to be based on anything real and of course we're going to have the scanline render and what we're going to do is we're going to make a dependency between the camera and the card the way we do it is we steal the focal length from the camera whatever that might be to the lens in focal knob within the card so we have that and then we do the same for the horizontal aperture so this means that they now have a relationship between them and this makes the card to be always in the first room of the camera if we don't tweak any other values here but because they are sitting both at the 000, zero, zero values within the world we can't see anything so we need to have even the slightest value on the card that's going to be in front of camera so we can see something so let's put this say for example here and as you can see even if you go like really far away it's going to be always within the first room of the camera this means also and you saw the size changing this also means that after the scan line render your 2d image is going to be exactly the same as your incoming image before the card no matter how far you go this won't change what you see won't change but because we're changing effectively the position in space we are also changing the values of its depth channel so if we shuffle the depth channel and we know that the depth channel comes for free within the scanline render we can have the depth and this depth unlike the other example we're not gonna invert it or anything like that because what we need is actually the more far away you will go the less value you will have so if we go really close to camera it's going to be one or, or close to it depending on your scene and then the more far away you go the less you'll get so we have two options of integrating the actual dragon in our scene dependent on where he is in space so if we put our smoke and dragon mixed together like that and we can do this because now we have an alpha channel we're gonna have this thing that will not change at all if we do this type of thing because we're not changing the RGB channel it's gonna be exactly the same but we can do something about it we can punch a hole in here well depending on where the dragon is and the depth channel will follow that of course so instead of putting this over for now well, we can leave it over but we can we should put another one another merge and this time we're gonna choose a stencil operation and we're gonna plug this directly from the depth channel and we're gonna punch a hole in here okay so now we will see a change depending on where we are if we are really far away the values are not very intense in the depth channel so we're gonna punch less of a hole and if you're gonna be really close to camera we're gonna have this a bit more as the silhouette of the actual dragon so this means that if we still use this guy on top of our dragon now the appearance of this is gonna give us more or less smoke in front of him so this is one of the approaches but i think there's a better way and the better way is to delete this guy and instead we're gonna make a dependency between the depth and the actual dragon by multiplying one by the other so if you're really close to camera this guy will be fully multiplied which means that it's going to show us exactly what it is and the more you go the less apparent it will be and its alpha channel will also change because you're multiplying the depth that is now on rgb so there you go i'm going to show you this in context here we have our card and the more far away I go from camera the more far away this will get 
in terms of appearance to a point that it will disappear actually and let's say that you have already a depth channel and you have a dragon flying in reality within the 3d scene you'll get the depth channel changing automatically and you can still use the same kind of technique to have this type of effect automatically even if the position of the dragon changes that's fine the dependency will always work and that's what you want to try to achieve always which is create systems that are bulletproof to this kind of changes as much as possible Possible. sometimes it's not possible but if it's possible that's what we should do